Oh, hey. <laughs> What's up, guys? Where have I been? Well, I've been hibernating. <laughs> but it's finally getting nice here, guys, and Espen contacted me and said, hey, do you wanna check out an e-bike? And I said, heck yeah. I've been riding a lot of bikes uh, last year and this year already, guys. I got a brand new regular bike, bicycle, that we've been doing a lot of trail riding and just going around town and stuff like that, really enjoying it as like a new form of kind of exercise. But they sent me this e-bike so i'm pretty excited to uh bust it open and check it out guys do a test ride and see what it's like so let's go ahead and open this thing up see what's inside get it assembled and then uh, do some test runs and see what we think but it should be getting pretty fast guys i don't have um i've only rode an e-bike like one time so it was not for very long so we'll see how this compares um but they say it comes mostly assembled so we'll see how much work we actually have to do to get this thing in a uh, riding operation. So there's a box in here. Looks like it's got your pedals and your charge uh, port and some other odds and ends. It's like the headlight tool kit. Looks like it comes with actually all the tools you need. We got a special tool, we got a wrench, have a multi-tool and that's actually really cool because you could probably throw that in your bike kit if you needed it when you're out and about. So all kinds of goodies in there. Owner's manual, it's like warranty and information have some also extra reflectors and things so we'll go ahead and set this stuff aside for now everything just kind of lifted right out there so maybe we'll just kind of use this box as part of the thing to hold it here actually we'll probably lay it down undo some of these tie wraps but as you guys can see it comes packaged fairly well everything is wrapped we have a box with parts and instructions most everything here is already assembled. It looks like light assembly, so put the front tire on, which if you've ever done that on a bicycle, it's fairly simple, but we'll go through all the steps, get her all put together, and see how she rides. So first thing I'll do is probably remove all this packaging and zip ties and things. But everything looks packaged great. I don't see any damage on any parts. We'll just keep chipping away at this, and I'm really loving this flat black. Uh, body paint. This looks absolutely killer on here. I think we'll start just when the bike's on its side before we flip it over and take the other side wrapping off. I'm gonna put the tire on so that way we can stand it up, rest it on its kickstand. So it looks like they ship it with a little uh, block piece here. You'll just go ahead and remove that. That's plastic and throw away. There's also a little block piece on the wheel here. Looks like that just kind of unscrews. You can pull it off. And then you'll notice there's a side with a caliper and a side without. So obviously you want the rotor on your caliper side. And we'll just go ahead and ease that in. And then there are some little uh, notches here. You basically slide the tire right in there. It'll just go right in really easy. And then they supply the hardware. If you've ever done one of these before, you're gonna unscrew the nut from this side. Remove the spring, and then you'll have the spring and the lever on this side and insert it through the center of the wheel. On the other side, you'll put the spring with the pointy side towards the wheel. So it'll go like this on the other side and we'll just screw it on. So once you have it in there and the bolt is tightened enough, on the other side, this lever should go down. And if it's too, if the bolt on the other side is too tight, you won't be able to close this, but you should be able to close it strongly. And so we got the front tire on there. We'll go ahead and stand the bike up. Looks like the handlebars and the bundles are already there. So all we'll have to do is just attach this main part. We'll just set this kind of down to the side for the moment and get the rest of this packing uh, material off. For the most part, this thing is ready to ride. One thing I really like, guys, all the tools are included. So this little multi-tool is included. It has all the Allens you'll need, plus a flathead and a regular screwdriver. So definitely a good thing you probably want to throw in your bike bag. Uh, especially if you're riding around with this thing. So if you loosen this top nut and the bottom one here, this will allow you to adjust the angle on your steering stem. So loosen this one and then this side one, we're gonna go ahead and put it at an angle I think will be kind of good and then tighten them a little bit. And then we'll put the bars on and check if we like that position. So just loosely tighten them for now. We'll go ahead and take these front bolts off. And then once you have that front piece removed, we can go ahead and lift the steering column and attach it to the bike. 
Now it looks like, unfortunately, this piece right here that holds the display, looks like that didn't make it through shipping. This plastic is definitely cracked. Uh, I'll hit up Espen, get a replacement. For now, I'll probably just glue it on there um, and it'll be fine. But we'll still get this thing rolling and check it out. But we'll go ahead and continue on. So now that we have the bars placed, we'll just go ahead and put that uh, bracket back on. Once you have it on there at an angle you like, I like to just loosely tighten the bolts and then we'll jump on and see how it feels before we fully tighten everything. That way you can get a feeling of it sitting on the bike and in the position you'll be riding in. That will just help you make sure before you tighten everything down that it's where you like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust the seat. I do like the quick release seat adjust here and it looks like it gives you a whole lot of uh, upward travel. So I'm 6'2". I'm gonna go what looks comfortable for me, probably somewhere in this range. And it does have the quick lock on the seat. I love that. So that way multiple people can use the bike, jump on and quickly adjust the seat. So that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna jump on, see if I like the bar position. And if I do, then we'll go ahead and stick with that. Go ahead and get on there in like a seating position. That feels pretty perfect to me actually. So now I'll go ahead and tighten down the bars and lock them into position because I do like that riding position. So we'll go ahead and lock those down all the way, put the pedals on, and then I think we're pretty much assembled, guys. Honestly, this is maybe a 30 minute job with very basic bike knowledge. Uh, it does include all the instructions and everything you'd need, uh, but really pretty much if you've ever rode a bike or adjusted your seat or put the front wheel on your bike, you should have no problem assembling this very quickly. So we'll go ahead and finish up. There is a front fender that comes with it if you wanna put that on, but let's go ahead and put the pedals on get everything tightened down, give it a once over, start charging it and then take it for a test ride. As for the pedals, they are metal construction, which I really like, those are high quality. All you do, if you've never installed a pedal, just go ahead and put it on and start screwing it into the crankshaft. And then on the inside of the pedal side here, there is a flat spot and they also supply you with the wrench that you need for that. You just go ahead and put it in and then crank it down to torque it. That will tighten the pedal onto the crankshaft. We'll go ahead and repeat just for the other side. So it looks like all we got left guys is to attach the front fender and the headlight. It comes with a headlight assembly. Uh, the bolts are already in place for the front fender, this top one here, and there's two side nuts uh, with some Teflon washers at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and first remove this top bolt right here, and then we'll put the fender and the headlight on. So what I'm gonna do here's the front fender guys. It goes down in a position like this from the back. This bracket here goes where that top bolt is, and then these side arms go down to the ones at the bottom of the uh, wheel there. So we'll first go ahead and we'll put this, you gotta put the screw through first the headlight bracket, and then through the wheel, and then we'll go ahead and screw it back into the frame. And again, before you fully tighten everything, guys, this does have some up and down clearance. Make sure you give yourself enough room so your tire is not rubbing on this fender. So you might wanna slide that up just a skosh. So you got some good clearance. Go ahead and just, there it looks like there's some kind of extension cord. I just removed that, plugged it right in so there's just less cord here. Maybe I'll push some of that back inside the bike frame. And all we have to do is attach these bottom supports to the already uh, aligned screws right here. And again, they've supplied a nice multi-tool right here that will let you hold the bolt in back so no extra tools are required. Plus the little multi-tool they got here tighten everything down with no extra tools, just what comes with the bike. So in the battery here, we're gonna go ahead and give it a charge. Just plug that into the little port right here. There's also a key that you need to actually be able to remove the battery if you wanna replace it. That's kind of a nice security feature so no one could steal your battery if the bike is locked up or something like that. Uh, and then also there's a little battery power indicator here um, that shows how charged it is. On the battery charger itself, there's a small LED down here. It's red when it's charging green when it's fully charged. The manual says it takes up to six to seven hours to charge a battery fully from a dead condition. So we'll go ahead and just give it a little bit to charge up and then we'll go out and take it for a ride.
also features a front suspension lockout. That's great for if you're riding on pavement, you can lock the front suspension so it will bounce less and you'll lose less of your momentum. You can open it up for some off-road to let the shocks move a little bit more. And I find that's a real handy feature on mountain bikes. So I'm glad to see they've included it here. On the other side, we do have a rebound adjustment and that will adjust the rebound on the shocks to be harder or softer to your liking. The Espen Sport also features front and rear rotor disc brakes, which are pretty standard on bikes these days, but it's just nice to see them include those standard features. There are some accessory mount rack spots in the front here. There was no accessory rack with this by default, so I just just took those bolts out so there wouldn't be any kind of rattling or anything like that. It does come with shorty adjustable front and rear brake levers. On your left side you have your control set for power mode and then changing your pedal assist. This is your digital throttle. On your right side these are your gear shifts. I really wish they would have included a gear shift indicator so you knew what gear you're in. These clicks they're all push forward so I'm kind of used to push and then click pull but these ones are push forward to shift up click to shift down, but they're all both push forward controls. It also features a rear brake light that activates when you actually hit the brakes on the bike. So that's pretty cool, especially if you do night riding, it has all the built-in stuff for taillights, braking, and headlights. So it does have different modes, guys. You can hit the M button to look at your average speed, your max speed, and then your current speed. Hitting the plus button switches the pedal assist mode from one to five five being the strongest, one being the least, or you can have zero assist. If you press and hold the plus button, that will turn on the headlight. You can see the headlight icon there. Press and hold the plus to turn it off. And there's also a pedal assist that will push the bike slowly. So if you press and hold the minus key, the bike will start to move forward at a slow speed. That way, if you have to move up a hill, you can use that as a push assist. There's also a USB charge port at the bottom here, and you can turn on that charge function by pressing and holding the M button for two seconds. You'll see the icon in the top here light up. That will be a pass-through charge. So let's say you have a cell phone sitting here for navigation. You can actually charge it from the bike while you're riding. So that's also another really cool feature, especially if you're out and around town. It'll just make it easier to keep your phone charged. All right, guys, so here we go. E-spin, we're riding. Right now, I'm just riding it like a regular bike, what I'm used to, what you would probably be used to. And it rides actually very easy. It's not very heavy, doesn't feel overly heavy or like it's hard to pedal. I'm in the highest gear now, and it's pretty easy, a regular kind of bike and pedal speed. So we should be able to press and hold the power button turn the bike on and we'll see when that assist kicks in. So right now the assist level is only on one, but I can definitely feel it start to take over and assist me in pedaling at the highest gear here. And it does have multiple levels of assist, so we'll go ahead and turn it up at the plus. This is a second level of assist. Oh yeah, I can feel that start to kick in. Go up to the third level. It's a pretty nice display. It has a uh, speed there, miles, tripometer. Hit the M to switch modes, our average speed. Max speed current speed. So let's go ahead and crank it up to five. Oh man. Now she's kicking in. I'm barely pedaling and it's just ripping. I'm just pedaling very lightly, but the assist is pretty much doing all the work here. After you stop pedaling, you can feel for a couple seconds, the motor keep going and then it disengages. Once you start pedaling again, you probably have about two revolutions before it starts kicking in. Or if you want, you can use the throttle here. Oh yeah, and that's just all electric. Not pedaling anything. We're just cruising now. Disc brakes feel pretty good. I'm liking that. It does have adjustable brake levers. Might have to adjust the uh, but it's just the rear brake one. Goes in a little further than I would like, but 
the stand up pedal assist. Oh man, that gets you going. <laughs> oh, this is great. Come to a stop here and we'll see how the assist goes from a stop. Start pedaling like normal. Yep, and it just starts assisting. Boom, takes off real quick. And this is in the highest gear. We'll go ahead and drop gears down. The big lever on the right is the uh, shift down to an easier gear. The small one on the inside, you also have to push. I'm used to my normal mountain bike, my Trek, where you pull, pull one, push the other. These are both push. So that one clicks into a higher gear until it stops. It would be nice if there was an indicator so you could know what gear you're on, but it doesn't appear to have one. But she's zipping pretty good. And it does have a shock lock out here. So when they're locked, it makes a shock so they won't compress. When you open them, that's what you want to do for off-road. That will make the shock so they can compress and dampen more of the impacts from bumpy roads. So typically when you're riding on pavement, you leave it locked out. That'll keep the shocks from compressing and you won't lose as much power uh, when you're pedaling. So typically ride locked when you're on pavement or hard surface. If you want to go off road, you switch it to open. That makes it so the shocks will have some bounce to it. You can take it off road. It'll handle those bumps better. Oh man, she's quiet. Oh man, this is super fun, guys. <laughs> it's got the 27 and a half inch wheels, so that's a pretty standard mountain bike size. If you guys haven't ridden a mountain bike before, feels pretty much at home. My main mountain bike's a 29 inch wheel. Definitely feels a little bit different than that, but not much. It's going. The gears seem to be doing pretty well. Didn't have to do any adjustments to them. Um, might need to tweak them a little bit. If you guys have ever had a new bike, you'll know that the cables tend to stretch after you ride it more. So the more you ride it, the more you shift it. Those cables are gonna stretch out and the gear shifting might not be as clean. So you might have to adjust them yourself or you could take it to probably a bike shop, have them dial in your shifter for you. But she cruises, she's a class two. She's got 500 watt. Uh, electric motor listed as a top speed of 20 miles an hour and it's pretty it's pretty perfect guys I'm telling you that is nice if you want to take a break just hold the throttle down and you're pretty much riding like an electric <laughs> feels kind of like a motorcycle She's cruising now. A little bit of extra, you can definitely get over 20 miles an hour just by pedaling a little bit. Let's hop up this curb. See how she do. <laughs> oh yeah, easy money. Oh man, she rips. <laughs> oh man, not gonna lie, this thing is super fun, guys. Ear to ear smiles right now. I can see this would be perfect for camping. If you live in the city and you gotta get around quick, this is sure gonna be a nice thing for you.
she handles it good. Oh man, this is fun. This is real fun. See, now we're on the pavement. You want to lock it out. That'll make it so your front stops bouncing so you can go faster. This is the highest gear right now with me pedaling plus the assist on the highest level. <laughs> oh, it's fun. Oh, I love it, guys. The no hand in riding, super easy too. Like, it feels completely in control and stable. The motor helps push the bike, so that actually helps with the centrifugal force, keeping the wheels up and making riding no handed easier. And I like how the motor speed is really quiet. You can barely hear it. Even without pedaling, you hear the clicking of the gears over the motor itself. You can hear the hum of the tires over the motor. So the class two is not too loud. It's easy enough you can pick it up. Even if you have a hard time lifting heavy stuff, you can easily grab this, these handle racks here, pick it up, spin it around if you need to. Another great feature is the kickstand here. It won't sink into the mud. And because it's back further, even if you pedal backwards, your pedals won't hit it. So if you've ever had one of the OG bikes, you know what I'm talking about. The pedal will go back, hit your kickstand, and then you got to spin your pedals forward. They got that right. So it has a lot of the modern stuff. We'll try with the assist going in the off-road here. Oh yeah. Easy. Easy. Love the Espen bike though, guys. This thing is is great. This <laughs> This is great. I can see how this would be great. Maybe you have a disability, or maybe you're getting older and joint pains. I can see how the assisted pedaling would definitely help. Um, I do like regular bikes too. I like the fitness aspect of it. Um, you can definitely get some fitness with this bike, but with the assist, which you can turn on and off, uh, it does make it easier or harder depending on what you need. So we could just turn it off actually. Let's turn the assist all the way off. Now I'm just pedaling under my own power. It's working pretty good. Not too hard to pedal, just about the same as a normal bike, just without any level of assist. So this will help you save on battery, especially if you're going downhill, why use the assist unless you need to just go faster. But for the most part, it's pretty awesome, guys. I prefer the lower position, so that's, I just kind of locked it straight out, up just a tad, because I am a little bit taller, but Overall, it's it's a great feeling bike. It rides smooth. It's quiet. The gears shift, and this could definitely be a great city commuter, rural commuter, or just adventure bike. Something to bring along camping on the camping trips. Ah, what a beautiful day, guys. What an adventure. I can definitely see there'll be some fun adventures on this bike. So stay tuned. We'll do some more rides. We'll hit some more intensive trails over there uh, and see how long we can go on the battery. We'll do definitely another ride vid. We'll let a few people try and ride it, see what they think. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for checking out the Espen bike with me. Thank you, Espen, for sending me this bike for a review. I absolutely love it. I already love regular biking, but this is just even more fun. If you lived in a city, downtown or even in the country or just like doing trail riding this could be the perfect bike for you well i'm loving it guys we're gonna keep going here switch that assist back on and hit the road <laughs>